how would you describe the similarities between the work you've done in the past and Hong? Are there similarities? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for me, for me, it's all movement building. For me, it's you know using music as a vehicle to build a progressive political movement. Um, and injecting some notion of fun into doing that. I mean, one of the takeaways from the 60s, and this is true of every demonstration we go to, progressive movements are stuck in a view of what a demonstration is that's, to my way of thinking, deadly boring. Um, it's like most demonstrations are rallies that include 20 speeches because every organization that signs on to endorsing the event has to have their own speaker and so you get 20 speakers saying things that everybody there already knows and believes and not only is it not that interesting it it doesn't do much to involve people and certainly doesn't do much to change anybody's mind who didn't already believe the stuff. Um, music has a way of doing a couple of things. Music has a way of bumping up the energy level a couple of notches, and that always helps. Um, but it also has a way of inviting people in, inviting people to participate. And as we get, we the bands, get more sophisticated in knowing how to manage all of that, uh, one of the things we're doing with the groups we work with is we are putting their chance to our music. So before we figured this out, we would run into situations where chanting and bands playing would be all, all would often be working at cross purposes to one another you know we'd be playing a song and somebody'd start a chant and then we'd have to figure out well do we want to play over the chant and drown them out or are we or are we going to respect the demonstration and let the chant happen even though some people are enjoying the music more and we thought well the way to fix that is to figure out how to build the chant into the music so what we do now is you know, we talk with their chant leaders um, and get them to understand that we want to do a chant within the music and that they should follow our lead. And we'll start a song from our repertoire. In, in our case, it's, you know, usually some New Orleans funk tune that has a, you know, a good beat. Um, and, and then in the middle of the song, the melody instruments will drop out and we'll just play a percussion riff over which you can chant the chant that they wanted to chant anyway without music. And the fact that there's music wrapped around it really bumps the energy up significantly. People have much more of a sense of participating in the whole thing. So we're doing more and more stuff like that. We are integrating ourselves into the art making um, that local groups are doing. We're working uh, with a group called Extinction Rebellion. Are you familiar with Extinction Rebellion started in, um, in London. They actually shut down the city of London. Um, they shut down all seven bridges. and just, you know, ground London to a halt. And they've now become international. There's chapters all over the place in the United States. Um, and there's an Extinction Rebellion Boston that we've worked closely with and they're doing lots of very innovative art making. Um, I don't know if, were you at the Honk Festival in Hurrit Square? Did you? No, no, I went the day before. And ah, well, this year at the end of the parade, we did a massive die-in <laughs> in the middle of Harvard Square in front of the main stage. Mm -hmm. And it was Extinction Rebellion that proposed that idea. What does die um, Everybody, well, the theme of the parade this year um, we decided that the theme of the parade for this year would be everybody needs a home. And that was sort of an umbrella uh, statement that included, you know, immigration issues, immigrants need a home. It included housing and affordable housing and rent control issues, everybody needs a home. And it included environmental issues, the earth is our home. Um, and so we had in the parade groups 
um, that represented all of those issues. And as those groups marched into Harvard Square, they all laid down on the ground. And then we simultaneously had four of the bands go up on stage and do what was in effect a New Orleans funeral, um, where we would start by playing a dirge-like song as if people were dying. Um, and then we read a very short statement about why we were here, um, you know, recounting the three themes that I just mentioned, um, and then asked people for a moment of silence. And the place was dead silent for, you know, a few minutes. And then, as per what happens in New Orleans funerals, is when you're leaving the cemetery, going back to the church, it's a party, it's a celebration. We went into this rousing chorus of, of I'll fly away, um, and everybody gets up. So it was a die-in followed by a rise up. Um, so it ended up being a big celebration in the middle of the square. And that's sort of a metaphor for what we would like to see happen politically. Do you think that demonstration would have been as successful without the explanation that you gave on stage? Is the ambiguity useful? Um, I think it can, I think reading the statement um, was important in this instance because there was a very complex, you know, set of issues. I mean, you had to understand immigration and housing and earth and, you know, and so, yeah, I think it would have been hard to just do that. But, but more and more people are doing this with creative artwork. I mean, when, I mean, Extinction Rebellion now carries coffins, you know. <laughs> You know, so when they do a die-in, there's coffins. You know what it is. Um, you don't have to say, this is a die-in. Um, you know, we are, you know, lamenting the fact that the earth could be dying. Um, so it is it is possible to do it without speech. Oh, I have to leave it, too. Okay, I want to be... Time. What time is it? It's one fifty. Um, fifty? Almost gonna be fifty. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess I'll get to my last question. Um, what's your personal personal mission? Do you have one? My personal mission? Yeah. To give back. I mean I'm I'm born into privilege. It's my obligation to give back. And how do you think that intersects with Honk's mission? Oh, I think that's what Honk is about. I mean, I think that's, you know, Honk is trying to create the space, you know, for people to take control of their lives and have some fun doing it. Um, Sometimes the magic works and sometimes it don't. <laughs>